Hi everyone. Another video from Ernie Tech Heavy Industries. Now this one is about you know trying to keep your G90 and your computer talking to each other. And so you can use your favorite software like WSJTX and all that kind of stuff. And this was inspired by someone on our G90 Facebook group who was having some problems and couldn't seem to keep things running. Yeah, it's not an uncommon problem. I, I suffer from it myself, actually. So what we're going to do today is we're going to crank out all of the tools, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of heavy-duty uh, production quality stuff and um, make a video. And as usual... It's not going to be, <laughs> it's not going to be NBC News quality, that's for sure. All right, here's what we have to do here. So we have our little venerable G90 sitting in front of us right now. Um, two things to do on the G90. First of all, make sure that we're not accidentally on the microphone because digital hates nothing more than the microphone. To do that, we're going to press the funk button until the light comes on, the little check engine light. And we're going to go over to the POW button. POW. Let me zoom in. Neato. Uh, that's what I like about my little Pixel 4 phone. It's all I need to make inane videos, and it works. Over here, you see the mic gain. I hate that. Um, press it one more time, the POW button. Make sure it says input line. If it's on input mic, switch it over to input line. I, I, you probably didn't done this before. And then just press that button right there. The next thing to do is just be sure by holding the funk button down that we have our audio level set. To do that, press over to menu 5 and set the aux in to about, I'm going to say 10 and go to next and set the aux 8. I think 8's a pretty good shot. This is actually where a lot of the problems come into play when people say that their um, levels are too high on WSJTX, that their little volume thing is up in the 60s and 90s and it's just too much. Number 8 is probably a good setting. Alrighty, press exit. And that's all you need to do on the G90 side. Now, this is where Ernie Tech Heavy Industries Cranks it all out, spares no expense to make sure we have the highest quality production possible. Bear with me. Sing. And how's that for a transition? <laughs> Not too good. Right now I have JTDX up and running. And it's up and running just fine. And there's all sorts of South America stuff coming in here on 10 meters this lovely morning at noon um, in the fair city of Philadelphia. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to minimize these things to get them out of the way. And let's talk about audio setup. Move my cup of coffee. Mr. Gates was kind enough to give us a little window on the lower left-hand corner of the screen, which we will click. And he was kind enough to give us a little gear for settings, which we will also click. And then this whole thing pops up. We'll go to sound on the left-hand corner, which it already is. And we're going to ignore all this. And we're going to come over here to the left-hand column, or right-hand column, get my hands right, and go to the sound control panel clicker. Click on that. And I'm going to minimize this in the background just to get it out of the way. And here's the box that we have our most interest in. Let me zoom in so we can all be happy together. All right, this is the sound box from Windows. You got to dig to find it, but we found it. A couple of tips here, and one of them is this. When you plug in your interface from the radio to the computer, obviously make sure all the drivers are installed. One of the things about Windows, which is nice, is that 90% of the drivers that are out there, it already knows to either install or look for on the net. Most of the interfaces that use USB use the what the FTDI interface, the um, digital audio chip. Once you plug that in, the computer finds it and you're up and running. But I found, and maybe you have too, that occasionally it loses its little mind. So if you can't get things to work when it was working yesterday, before you went to lunch, pull out the USB and the computer, plug it back in again, see if it doesn't reload the drivers 7.3 times out of 10 that solves your ills. If not, well, then we continue on. What I've done here is I've made some customization to this that I think you should too. These are called pro tips. 
So remember, you have two things to concern yourself with, the playback to the radio and the recording from the radio. You know, when Windows was created, I don't think anyone was really thinking about attaching ham radios to them. So when they use the thing like playback and recording, they're really thinking in terms like a sound studio, recording being from microphones or from some other source. Well, consider the G90 to be like that source. You're recording from the G90. Playback means that you, instead of going to a speaker system, you're going to the G90. And that's how the software interfaces with the radio. Okay. When you plug in your interface, the very first thing it does is it says, look, I found an interface and I'm going to call it the USB audio device. Pro tip, change the name of the thing to something you can remember. This is one of the things that most people don't even know they can do, but you can. So on the playback side, right now I have it set up to be audio to Zyagu G90, or Siagu. I'm learning how to pronounce it. When you go to the properties, you can change on your very own from what it was to what you want it to be. I'm calling it Audio to Siagu G90 just to remind myself. And I'm changing the icon just because I want it to. On levels, set your speaker about 50. Now, that's a little high, and you're going to crank it down. But let's start with 50 because why not? Okay? So... Change your name of the device to something you'll remember, Audio 2 G90. I like Levels 50. That's for the playback. For the recording, go to Properties on that device. Change it from USB Audio Device to Audio from Seagoo G90. Go to Listen and make sure the Listen to Device is clicked because it gives you confidence that you know things are working when you can hear the noise. A lot of people don't do that, and they think, oh, this isn't working. No, it is. You just can't hear it. Listen to the device so you can hear something. Go over, over to Levels, and this is important. Crank this down to around 10, because when people complain about the audio level on WSJTX being too high, it's probably because they have this microphone from the recording side set to like 50 or something, and then you're just blasting sound, volume, voltage into the computer. Set it at 10, and I think you're going to be eh, pretty happy. I'm going to go a little further and set it at, well, you see this, I'm going to set it at 5. <laughs> anyway, that works for me. Hit on OK. Hit on OK. That literally was all there was to it. Now, I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to turn back on the JTDX. Let me back out. Back out. All right, so I got JTDX running, but I'm not using it directly to the radio. I am running JTDX through the good old venerable FL rig. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have literally never been able to get any of my software to talk to the G90 directly. Now, if you've been able to figure it out, let me know. I have not. But FL Rig works every friggin' time. So what I do is I install FL Rig. I configure FL Rig so that it, again, Ernie Tech spares no expense for high quality <laughs> video production. I set Zigu G90 and my COM port, which was assigned when I plugged in my interface. And I ignored all the other things except for two stop bits because all the rest of this stuff, I mean, what are we, like 1985 IBM XT? Maybe you are. Use FL Rig as your interface. Set it up for your radio and your USB connection. And when you hit the init button, it'll work. It's a good, it's a good piece of software. And then, and only then, let me zip on over here. I already zoomed in. How nice of me probably missed all that. In your favorite piece of software, WSJTX, FT, whatever, whatever, JS8 call, EIEIO, you go down to the settings, and in the audio settings, I'm going to tell you, this is actually a really neat little thing I didn't know until I finally read the instructions that came with the interface. Never read instructions, because nothing makes ham radio more fun than frustration. Your mileage may vary. 
the input is from audio from Zigu G90, and it says right, just the right channel, and only the right channel, not both channels, not mono, not stereo, not quadraphonic, nothing like that, just right. And then the output says both. And it solved a problem. It started to work. Read the instructions. As far as the radio is concerned, FL rig I've selected instead of the actual G90. And that way it's working through FL rig. All right, you've been down this road before. I'm not telling you anything new. I doubt it highly. There's a million guys out there who have set this stuff up before. But I wanted to make my take on it because someone had asked me to help them. I don't know what time zone they were in. I was going to try to get online to give them a hand. But then I thought, you know what? I want to help everybody. Let's see how this goes. Okay? All right. So the bottom line is this. Let me back out all the way so you can see the shack. The bottom line is this. As long as you have the G90 set up so that you have the input be a line and not mic, as long as you have the volume in and the volume out set somewhere in between uh, 10 and 8 on both of them, you're good. When you get to the software, don't bother trying to get the software to work with the radio. Install FL Rig and let it work through FL Rig. You'll be so much happier. And as far as the audio, there's two things, playback and recording. Change the name of the device so that you remember it. It reminds you of what it is. Set the levels appropriately. Set it for 10 for the audio coming in, 50 for the audio going out. And I think it'll be good to go. I mean, I think that's really about all there is to it. One of the things that I do to keep things from going south overnight, I never turn the computer off. Brilliant. Anyway, I hope that's helpful to people. I know I'm not the, this is not the original. There's a million people out here showing you how to do this. Um, take it for what it's worth. I hope it works for you. All right, please subscribe. Lots more stuff to come. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.